Alright guys, welcome back to another video and in this tutorial what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to create your own custom AVDs, of course your virtual devices. I showed you guys how to use the default one earlier, but if we want to become expert app developers from the ground up, that's where we need to start. We need to understand pretty much what goes on behind the scenes because after all, all these apps that people develop, they would be pretty worthless if we didn't have any phones or tablets to run them on. So that's what I'm going to be doing and in the next tutorial, I think I said that last time, but in the next tutorial I promise we're going to be getting into the code, the designer, all that good stuff. So for now, hop up to this little thing, remember this is the AVD manager and again I already told you guys that I created my own custom one right here and in the last example you guys may have ran ran this one and it may have taken up your whole screen probably pretty annoying so in this tutorial what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own custom AVDs so first of all go down here to this little button and click create virtual device now of course the first thing we have to choose is what device do you want to create do you want to create a TV a phone a wearable like a watch or a tablet well, I'm just gonna go to phone and then once I click that I get all of the definitions of phone now don't let the word definition fool you these are pretty much just different phones like if you went into I don't know like a Verizon store or like a Best Buy or something this is pretty much the equivalent of picking out which phone that you want so of course this edited one is one that I was working on earlier but let's just go ahead and pick out um, let's use the Galaxy Nexus that was actually a pretty popular one so this is the Galaxy Nexus phone now the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to clone this because if I start just editing this then it's gonna mess up the default settings so you always want to clone it and this is gonna allow you to use a copy that if you mess up with then you just messed up the copy no big deal so first of all since this is our own custom phone I'm gonna name this thing anything that I want so we'll say that um I don't know we'll say that we're making the slimmest phone in the world so I'm gonna call my phone slim shady the new phone that's gonna wipe out Samsung wipe out Motorola slim shady is the next big thing alright so anyways there's my little daydream another thing that I want to point out is all of this stuff again we're gonna be customizing a bunch of stuff on this phone later on but this is pretty much the hardware configuration now you don't really ever want to change the hardware configuration of your phone because it's not like um they ever release phones with like 720 by uh, 18 million pixels you know the hardware always stays the same for the most part it's the software that changes so again give your device or your phone a custom name and click finish and now if you go to phone you can see okay this is our custom phone same hardware we didn't do anything stupid to it so click on it and choose next so now that we have pretty much the phone itself and by that I mean just the hardware we can go ahead and start working on the system image so this is pretty much saying what version of Android do you want to use now I recommend um, putting the latest one on it just because I don't know you know that oops, knocked over my uh, mouse actually by the way I started this has nothing to do with app development or anything but um I started to get like carpal tunnel symptoms so whenever I would type like my entire arm there would be like a nerve that shot up and I'm like oh my god in the middle of my tutorial so I got this cool little glove that had like bean bags in it and I also got these things called vertical a vertical mouse so go to Google and type in vertical mouse that's what I'm using it's like this goofy looking mouse that um, I don't know it kinda looks dangerous to be honest but anyways got a little sidetracked there back to the video so what we want to choose is what version of Android do we want to put on that phone we just made well a system image is pretty much just a copy of all the system files and settings pretty much just think of it as like your main um, system your main computer so the one I like to use is just uh, x86 from Google these all are open source 
but I always just went with Google because I don't know they have like the best developers in the world and you always know that their system image is nice working correctly it never gave me any problems so I like to choose that one click next now here is where I like to do a couple of things to um, pretty much customize my virtual device so again this name looks pretty good alright that looks good that looks good one thing that I like to do is I like to go to scale and right now the one you just saw Bucky's phone that was 4 dp on device 1 pixel on screen now what this does is it just shrinks it to make it fit better on your screen because again this screen size of the phone it might be bigger than your desktop screen size so again whenever you're developing it's going to give you some problems I usually choose 4 dp on device 10 dp is like a really mini phone it looks like I don't know like the size of your it's just way too small so again I'm gonna choose <coughs> that was embarrassing anyways moving on so uh, yeah that's what I like to do now another thing I want to point out is this emulated performance you can only choose one of these and I'm gonna recommend used host GPU now what this does is it allows the emulator to use your computer's graphics card the actual computer your desktop or laptop or whatever to make it run faster now this snapshot what this would do is it will pretty much um keep the state of your emula emulator so whenever you close out of it it starts up faster again so the reason I don't like this is because whenever you close your emulator it has to save everything and it takes a little bit of time to close out so I'm gonna recommend use host GPU which pretty much speeds up your emulator and during your development process you can just keep your phone running so um, you know as long as you keep it running you shouldn't have any issues at all so now that we have our virtual device set up just click finish and this takes a while to actually create it but once we have it created again what we can do is we can actually edit it to go to this button and of course if you ever want to change any settings maybe okay that was actually a little too small so I'm gonna boost that size up you can do it right there and of course to test it out you can just click this green button right here now while this is booting up again like I said during your development process you can actually just leave this entire emulator running you don't need to close out of it like um I don't know maybe in some other uh, like program programming languages you're learning you actually close out of a program whenever you're testing it and then rebuild it well the cool thing is you can just keep this window open and then click this to rebuild your project and it's pretty much just gonna restart the app right in your emulator so you don't have to wait for this to boot up every time so again there you go there's your emulator again this one was just a demonstration I'm gonna delete it because I already have that sweet one um, Bucky's phone that I'm going to use for the tutorials but if you ever want to make your own custom emulators your AVDs or edit them delete them now you know how so now that we know how to make those we can finally move on to the good stuff it's gonna be awesome so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial